In this video, we talk about how I wrapped up the Dark Eldar Succubus. What up, many people? Last week, we started talking about my Dark Eldar Succubus. We went over the skin suit and also the skin. This week, we're going to be going over the blue spot color, the yellow armor, the gray hair, the base, and also all the other fiddly bits. Similar to last week, we're going to be talking more so about the decisions that I make regarding the piece as a whole, and less so about specific techniques like layering or edge highlighting. Strap in, because this is going to be super exciting. I'm actually probably just as exciting as the last video was, so like moderate level. I guess. Let's start with the yellow armor. The yellow armor is accomplished the exact same way as the rest of the yellow armor in my army. I start with an ochre tone and then wash it with a brownish, orangish wash. And then from there, I build up successfully higher and more vibrant colors of yellow, mixing it into my original base coat until I get to a pretty pure electric yellow. At this point, I take that highlight and I add white to it so I get kind of a straw color and then do a very, very fine edge highlight. This is my shout out to Games Workshop's Dark Eldar Studio Army, which is very, very edge highlighted and very outlined. So I wanted to kind of do what they do, but in my own style. After the yellow armor, I moved on to the bronze bits. Again, as I described it last week, the majority of my scheme is mostly warm tones. So I wanted this brass to be a little bit colder. So I mixed in some silver with my brass base coat and also added a little bit of metallic blue paint. This really is good for making the brass appear a little bit colder in nature. I highlighted the brass by adding more and more bright silver until I was highlighting with pure silver. After this, I moved on to the silver metallic bits, the piercings, the archite glaive, and all the spikes. I started with a very, very dark metallic tone, in this case, bolt gun metal. I washed it with a dark purple. This adds more interest to the shadows than just a straight black, kind of more of a richness. I then layered up brighter and brighter silver. Now, I kind of made a mistake here. My end result is way too dark. I left a lot of the base coat hanging around and this kind of made my silver bits look really dull. If I was going to redo this, I would definitely make sure that I was going to layer in more of that brighter silver so it'd be a little bit more brilliant. After the metallics, I moved on to the black leather, the bandaging around the archite glaive and also her boots. When I first painted this, I was actually shocked at how dark it was in comparison to the rest of my miniature. And this showed me that the majority of my paint scheme is, is very bright. There is very little darkness to it. So at this point, I deepened the shadows of the skin suit to kind of make the black look more in place. I then edge highlighted the black parts with a gray and then a brighter gray after that. I felt that this was a little out of place, so I took some brown ink and diluted it heavily and then kind of washed it over the entire black part. This kind of toned down my edge highlight a little bit too much, but it also made the boot look kind of slightly brown, which is a little bit more fitting with my theme. And since ink has kind of a glossy finish, it made the leather look like fresh new leather. This isn't necessarily a good effect in my case because my succubus is running around the desert, so the odds of her boots being fresh and shiny aren't the highest. I also don't really like glossy finishes and prefer more matte or satin finishes. After the leather parts, I moved on to the blue spot color, which is not really a spot color at all, as it dominates almost like 30% of the model. With all these bits, I started with a turquoise color, and then shaded with a dark blue, and then added a brighter blue to highlight it further and further. To get the glowing effect on the agonizer, I took my highest, most brightest blue highlight and placed it in the areas I want somewhere in the middle of the agonizer, and then more so towards the tip of the agonizer. I then took the mid-tone blue and glazed the transition between the highlights and the deepest shadow to kind of smooth it out to make it look like it blended from one color to the next. In retrospect, I should have differentiated more of these colors. For instance, the vials on the agonizer, I could have painted maybe purple or maybe even red just to kind of get some more differentiation there. It's a little bit too much blue for my purposes. Something you can learn from this lesson is that if you are looking to enroll a miniature in a painting competition, you should start 
well before the deadline of the competition. So if you make mistakes like these and you want to fix them, you have adequate time to do so. In my case, I really didn't, so I kind of just stuck with the majority of the blue. After the blue, I moved on to the gray. The majority of the members of the witch cult in my army have very, very bright gray or white hair. Kind of like the sun is bleaching their hair to be very, very bright. So I started with a very light gray and then added pure white to my gray mixture to layer it up more slowly and slowly, just like we do in the layering video as aforementioned. A pretty easy to fix issue that I had with this part was that my shadows weren't dark enough. I could have taken some black and added it to the midtone and then shaded the model with that color further to better define the hair and the fur. Finally, we're on to the base, and if I'm being honest, this was probably the most fun I had on the piece in its entirety. I've never done a display-like base, and it was a lot of fun to do something like this. My original plan was to go out to the hardware store and buy a Forstner bit to drill a shallow hole into the base to accept the succubus' base, but I didn't get around to that, and so what I did instead was I made an outline of terrain on the base that I could just place the succubus in. I first put down my larger rocks with super glue, and then with PVA glue, I put down my smallest terrain, and then added a little bit of variety with some different size terrain. I then primed it with a black, and then primed it from a direction with some white, in the direction where my succubus would be facing, in fact. The effect that I wanted was that the succubus was kind of running headlong into the sunset. So I wanted the brightest halves of the rocks to be on the portion where the succubus was facing. After the undercoat, I glazed on some yellows to retain that sunset information. And I washed it with some oranges and some browns to give it a little bit of diversity. And then I dry brushed it with a wheat color to really pick out all the grains of the sand. It's worth mentioning that I also did the exact same thing to the succubus's base and then attached her to it with a metal pin. After that, I applied some static grass of various kind to add more differentiation and also to hide my mistakes, and I was done. I had a lot of fun painting this miniature and it was incredibly challenging and I learned a lot. It's important as artists that we evaluate what we're good at and what we're bad at and we pursue those things that we're bad at so that we can have a breakdown of our current skill set so that we can kind of grow anew as painters. It's kind of like a weightlifter. When they weightlift, their muscles tear and they grow back stronger. I encourage all of my viewers to do this. Grab a model that you think looks totally awesome and paint it up to the best of your ability. Get feedback from peers and take notes and learn as much as you can. It doesn't need to be for a painting competition. It can be just for the fact that you want to learn more about yourself as a painter and also improve. Speaking of you guys, let's check out our community highlight for this week. This week we have some infinity minis from Luis Puenta. Specifically, a US Ariadna Ranger for Sectorio. Honestly, what's not the like? The attention to detail is amazing. The beauty mole, the mustache, the eyes, and let's not forget that beautiful tan leather. Wonderful submission, Louise. If you want to see your managers at the end of a video, check out the description below. If you know a mini man or woman who could benefit from all the mistakes that I made and learn alongside with me like I did in this video and also the first part, please share this video with him or her. It helps me out a ton and it helps the channel grow a lot. But until next time, don't forget to paint more minis. At the same angle and direction on his miniature. As you can see, my initial outcome was very subtle. Here's the model before varnishing next to all the airbrush applications. Can you see how the finish affects the color? One. Can you hear the water upstairs? My wife is griefing me. <laughs> no one drinks on my watch.